Now, it's been another tense week in the South China Sea area. On Thursday, China criticized a UN tribunal that will rule on some of its sovereignty claims in the South China Sea. Now, foreign ministry officials said the case amounted to forced arbitration. Everyone must abide by the laws and the facts. Some people are trying to change the concept stealthily to confound right and wrong and black and white. They may be able to mislead public opinion for some time, but eventually lies are lies and even repeated a thousand times will not become truth. Well, this week, the U.S. and China accused each other of uh, contributing to the increased militarization of the region when a U.S. warship sailed close to Fiery Cross Reef, a disputed area. Well, we can cross now to Sydney and speak to Aaron Connolly, who's a research fellow in the East Asia program at the Lowy Institute for International Policy. Welcome to the program. Now, uh, what do you make of China's stance? And could this potentially lead to some militarized action in the region? Well, China has long said that it will not abide by the tribunal's uh, ruling in this case. Uh, it says that the tribunal doesn't have jurisdiction. And in recent months, it's actually it's gone around to uh, some of it, the countries with which it has a strong financial relationship, uh, Cambodia, Laos, Fiji, and, and countries in a weaker position like Yemen, uh, and received some support for that position. Uh, but most international lawyers agree that in this case, the tribunal does have jurisdiction. Now, as you say, the, the tribunal uh, certainly has jurisdiction, but uh, uh, if China refuses to accept the court's judgment, what can be done? I mean, can China force the issue, and how do other players in the region, particularly the U.S., see it? Well, the fear is that if the court does indeed rule in favor of the Philippines against China, that China will redouble its actions in the South China Sea. Uh, over the last year, it's built uh, three artificial islands, very large uh, artificial islands, uh, large enough to host a, a military length airstrip uh, and that it might even declare what's known as an air defense identification zone in the south china sea uh, which would say that uh, china has to uh, be notified before any planes can fly over the south china sea uh, so there is a real risk here that uh, china will uh, sort of lash out if the ruling goes against it now you mentioned the philippines certainly one of the countries that has claims to uh, some of these islands they've just had an election and we know that the man who's almost certain to become president has some very strong words on this topic uh, so could matters change if uh, president duterte does take office well president duterte's rhetoric has uh, been very colorful on this subject but it's not been particularly clear on the one hand he said that he would uh, ride a jet ski out to Scarborough Shoal, one of the disputed uh, features in the South China Sea, and plant the Philippine flag there. Uh, but on the other hand, he said he's open to multilateral negotiations. And China's Global uh, Times newspaper, state-run newspaper, seems to believe he may be a man that they can do business with. So it's not really clear what Duterte's position will be. He doesn't have as strong a relationship with the United States as uh, his uh, predecessor, the outgoing president, Benito Aquino, has. And so that may factor into it as well. But uh, we really have to wait and see what his policy will be. And do you think China has a point when they say that there is increased militarization in the region? For instance, you had uh, the U.S. with its freedom of navigation exercise earlier this week. Exercises these patrols for 33 years in the South China Sea. Uh, so that's not what has changed. And it's important also to note that uh, China is not being singled out with these patrols. The U.S. in the last year has also challenged excessive maritime claims uh, by sailing uh, through waters that are, are claimed by all the countries in the region, including the Philippines and Vietnam. Uh, but that's not what's changed in the last few years. What's changed is uh, China creating these artificial islands and even dislodging the Philippines from uh, a shoal that they previously occupied in the South China Sea. That's what's ratcheting up tensions in the region. All right. Thank you for joining us, Aaron Connolly, then. Uh, apologies for.